Welcome to CoJumper. This is course two primary lessons and this lesson is about sequences and algorithms. The lesson objectives of this lesson are that students will be able to design a simple program that uses a sequence of commands. The expected outcomes are that all students will be able to create a sequence of commands with at least two play pods. Most students will be able to create a sequence of commands with at least three play pods and set their sounds. And some students will be able to create a sequence of commands that produces a musical scale or words in a song. The key vocabulary for this lesson includes the word sequence, a sequence is where one action is followed by another action. Another word is algorithm, a step-by-step -step process to complete a task. Command, an instruction for the computer. Many commands put together make up algorithms and computer programs. A computer program is the last vocabulary word. This is an instruction for the computer. In this unplugged activity, we will introduce students to the idea of how individual actions can be performed in order to complete a task. The materials needed for this unplugged lesson are index cards, one for each student, a pen or pencil or some form of ability to write down thoughts, and chairs. Up on the screen for the unplugged activity, there is an image of four students holding hands together. In this activity, you're going to need index cards. There's a couple different ways to get things written on the index card, and you can choose what works best for your class. But as an introduction, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to pretend that I'm going to write on it myself, or I'm going to have someone help me uh, touch type or um, Put the information on the cards from the adults and we're just going to let the students be the example and you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Students will help brainstorm what goes on the index cards and it's going to be tasks or things that are happening in the morning to get ready for school. These are tasks like waking up, brushing teeth, combing hair, eating breakfast, packing your bag. You'll need enough for each so that each student can have one step in the tasks of how to get ready for, in the morning for school. When students have their index cards, have them line up and they can, ideally they could sit in a chair, but if that doesn't work, students can stand as long as they can touch each other or join their hands or somehow um, be connected physically if possible. The teacher is going to stand at one end of the line and yell the word run. The first student is then going to say out loud the task that is on their card. And then when they're done, they're going to squeeze the hand of the person standing next to them or sitting next to them. Then that will be the indicator or the input for that person to yell out their task that's written on their card. Then they'll squeeze the hand of the person next to them and so forth all the way down the line. This just gives a very physical way for students to understand that a sequence is a series of these tasks happening in a row and one event triggers the next event. So yelling it out and then squeezing the hand triggers the next task to be started. You can introduce the word algorithm here, which is a step-by-step -step process to complete a task. Make sure they're using that word algorithm in a way that maybe they haven't used before. It's a little different than a mathematical discussion about algorithm. Uh, you can have students maybe in one spot drop their hands so that they are separated from each other and see what happens when you yell run um, and they should predict maybe what's going to happen. Students should run the algorithm and test their predictions. They've created a sequence, which is a set of instructions or commands that are carried out one at a time in the order that they appear. Next, we're going to move to the guided activity. Next, on to the guided activity. The objective of this activity is that students will be introduced to the play pod 
and they'll be able to combine pods to create a sequence of sounds. We'll cover the same vocabulary, sequence, algorithm, command, and computer program. And the materials needed for this are the hub and eight play pods. Before you get the kits out with all of your students, you'll want to be mindful of how students are interacting with materials. You might need a set of rules listed. Um, you might want to stage some ground rules for your class, similar to any way that you would manage materials in a classroom. You can always just start with a list, and it's amazing what students will come up with when you tell them that we may need to be thinking about how to handle these materials carefully and how should we get it out and put it away and all of those things about your environment, depending on the needs of your students. You might need to walk them through opening the case itself and taking out each of the parts as needed. In this case, you might want to discuss, uh, explain and discuss what the hub feels like and uh, make sure it has batteries in it and make sure that they can identify the play pod. They'll want to pull out eight of the play pods and they'll need a table space in which to do this. If you have dedicated um, mats or a dedicated table space for them to, to pull the co-jumper kit out and set on, that's always a good idea. And sometimes teachers just want to have it all out and ready for them to go so that they can get moving on these uh, computer science concepts and that's okay too. It doesn't all have to start with this first lesson. Sometimes that's too much for kids to take in and maybe you just want to limit that you already have eight play pods out and ready for them um, and when they sit down that's that's the materials that's that's already available for them. That's totally up to you how it works for you and your classroom. Up on the screen is an image of a hub connected with in thread one to two play pods this might be just one way you will model for students, but you'll want students to be able to have an opportunity to touch and feel each of the pieces of CoJumper one at a time. And you're going to want to describe each of them and let them touch it and feel it and, and see what happens when they plug in a play pod. And just before you have them plug it in, we're going to have to make the connection to the app as well. After you introduce the hub and the play pod and, and students have an understanding of what each one is and what it does, introduce the concept of the CoJumper app. The CoJumper app is the program that communicates with the hub and tells what pods are plugged into the hub and what dials are turned on, what dials are turned to on each of the pods. Make sure students have a sound set chosen. You'll need to walk them through how to select each of the sound set. And this is another thing that depending on your students, you might want to do for them ahead of time. Maybe you just already want to have, have it set to animals so that that's not something you're trying to do with as, as a whole class. Or maybe students can handle that and you can walk them right through how to select the appropriate sound set. So I'm going to switch my camera now to show the CoJumper kit on my document camera. And on the left hand side is the, the actual app. I have the sound set for thread one set to animals. And I'm going to walk my students through plugging in one play pod. First identifying the play pod and then plugging it in and then plugging it into thread one. Help them to recognize the click sound that it's connected and also make note with them that the app has changed. There is now a line of code that has appeared underneath thread one that says play horse for one time speed. So now begs the question, what do the dials do? Uh, you can instruct students to change a specific dial, like you could start with the sound dial and have them turn it until they hear maybe, a, maybe you can help them find a cat sound. There's a cat sound. Then have them add another play pod. 
to the back of the first play pod. Listen for the click, and the line of code automatically appears. This time it just happens to say play pig for one time speed. Have students now press the play button and show them how to trace the code. So they're going to press the play button and as the sounds are heard, they're gonna use their fingers to follow along the cord coming out of thread one and gently touch the white part of the play pod that is making that sound and then follow the cord to the next play pod when the next sound um, is heard. So we're gonna practice that right now. Push the play, trace the code, the cat, and now a pig sound. <laughs> they can keep adding play pods and practice what happens when they add a play pod. Um, they can eventually turn the dial to get a different sound and what happens when they push play. In this guided way of doing one pod at a time, uh, you'll ensure that students make the connection between what's happening on the dials, what's happening in the app, and what's happening for their ears when they hear what, what is being played. Once students have four play pods together and you think they're ready, allow them to change the sound set. You might need to walk them through how to do this again. Um, select the thread one animals and choose the drop down menu under sound set and let them go down to twinkle twinkle and select OK. They've got four play pods. There's four lines of code for twinkle twinkle and just see what happens. See if they can sequence it properly. This is a great opportunity to roam around the classroom and ensure that all students have figured out how code jumper works. Um, and ask some of those questions uh, like, what do you think the sequence is supposed to be? Or what is the sequence that you have in your program right now? I'm going to flip back to the PowerPoint deck and talk about the exploration. In the exploration, students will create a program with eight play pods set the sounds on each pod, and run and trace the program. The materials needed are the hub and eight play pods, as well as the sequence and algorithm exploration code card, which is at the end of this lesson. Start by giving them the sequence and algorithm exploration code card. Tell them this is like a list of instructions for how to create a song with, code, with the Code Jumper kit. Students will then try to set up their pods so that their app is identical to this code. Up on the screen right now, um, on the left hand side is an example of the code card. It says thread one piano, play C5 for half a beat, play D5 for half a beat, play E5 for half a beat, play F5 for half a beat, play G5 for half a beat, play A5 for half a beat, play B5 for half a beat, and play C6 for half a beat and thread. And on the right hand side, there is an image of the hub connected in thread one. There are eight play pods connected, all of them play pods. <laughs> this is really just an exploration time. The goal is not to have a perfect code card or a perfect program after this. This is intended to let them have a little bit of freedom to play and for you to also see if they are making those connections for how CodeJumper works. Try using the vocabulary words in your questioning as you support students in figuring out how they can create their programs and encourage trial and error. This is a little bit hard actually and it's okay that they don't get it right at the first time. Um, Remember, this isn't about making a perfect copy. It's about the process of how to build a sequence. It's important to emphasize the thinking that had to go into all of this sorting and what comes next in the sequence rather than the product itself or having a, a finished example of this code card. And that is it for sequences and algorithms. Thanks for joining.